AR is light and sound, flickering images, music on the wind. And yet their power is infinite. They endure as timelessly as inspiration itself, thrilling us, charming us, making us laugh and cry and sing along. They are lighter than air and stronger than steel. They are part of who we are and who we will become. They are milestones, they are magic. They are the movies. Motion pictures have a unique power. They bring us to new places in the world and new places within ourselves on journeys of adventure, terror, and delight. For as long as we live, we will treasure the movies. And for as long as the movies have lived, Universal Studios have been making movies to treasure. More than 65 years have passed but a presence still lingers on this movie set. The menacing existence of a phantom roaming the elaborate catacombs and dungeons below. This set, an exact replica of the Paris Opera, was the scene of Universal's most exciting production during the silent era, the Phantom of the Opera. The 1925 release was one of the greatest of all horror films. Its star, Lon Chaney, the man of a thousand faces, shattered audiences with his most grotesque face yet. That of Eric, the phantom of the title. I'm John Forsyth. Join me as we celebrate Universal Studios with a look at all the milestones, all the memories, and all we can look forward to in the years to come from this universe of cinemagic. studio is a world of illusions. The characters are actors wearing makeup and costumes, and the exotic locations are often just facades. In airport 1975, the mid-air collision of a private plane and a jumbo 747 jet and the tribulations of its passengers fill movie audiences with heart-stopping suspense. What the audience couldn't see was that this airplane was anchored firmly on the ground. But don't underestimate the power of these illusions. They make our hearts pound as surely as if we were there in the action. All the skill and expertise that goes into making the illusion draws us into the story until we are a part of it, until 
we are on a small boat menaced by a great white shark or zooming back to the future in a fusion-powered DeLorean car. We share the perils and the triumphs. We feel the hope, fear, rage, and love in the characters' hearts. That is cinemagic. To engage our minds and spirits in a way that is as real and vibrant as life itself. This universe of cinemagic began in 1915, when an immigrant entrepreneur named Carl Lemley turned the key on a city of dreams. Universal City. Built on a ranch overlooking the San Fernando Valley, it was a movie factory designed to satisfy a growing nation's hunger for this magical new form of entertainment. California was a perfect home for the young industry. The climate was warm, and the landscape offered deserts, forests, and mountains, all within a few miles. Then, as now, the public was invited to come in and see how the magic was made. That first year, Universal produced 250 silent movies. That's right, 250, from westerns to war pictures. They were set in the American frontier, the streets of Europe, the sands of the Sahara and all were made right here in the place Carl Lemley called the Wonder City of the World. Now here at Six Points, Universal could film six movies with six crowds cheering them on, all at the same time. And just by moving the position of the camera, the scene was changed to another street in another town in the Wild West. And for 25 cents, the price of admission, visitors were given a box lunch and a ticket to history. In 1915, that golden year when Carl Lemley opened Universal City to the public, he vowed to make movies to make the people laugh or cry or sit on the edge of their chairs the world over. Today, Universal Studios is sharing its special magic with more people than ever, welcoming the world to the place where the Hollywood blockbuster was born. Universal Studios Hollywood is where the magic comes to life, and where you can not only see the magic, you can live it. We're standing here live at Universal Studios Hollywood. We're about to invade the space of our own cameraman. Hello, cameraman.
There is nothing quite like being backstage at Universal Studios Hollywood, where we are immersed in the lore of the silver screen. Only here, in the original behind-the-scenes studio, are real working sets open for the public's exploration and enjoyment. At every turn, on every street, memories are awakened. And we relive moments from our favorite television shows and movies. Westerns were the favorite of movie fans right from the very beginning. And much of this area was open ranch land with real cowboys who lived and worked here. Carl Lemley hired many of them as extras on his frontier sagas with straight arrow heroes such as Hoot Gibson, Tom Makes, Harry Carey. One of his first directors was the great John Ford, the master of the Westerns. Visitors sat in wooden bleachers to watch the movies being made, and they cheered the heroes and booed the villains and caught their collective breath during the most perilous scenes. Today, Universal Studios Hollywood continues the tradition of spectacular live-action shows. The Wild 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 West stunt show highlights some of the most memorable stunts performed in the history of Western movies. Hollywood's most skilled stuntmen and stuntwomen and horses perform more than 100 feats here, from breaking bottles to knock down drag out brawls. The town is literally booming when the show comes to an explosive finish. magic and onto the scene of motion pictures and television's finest moments is one of Universal's oldest and greatest traditions. Over 70 million people from around the world have come to Universal Studios Hollywood to live a little of its cinemagic on its famous movie streets amid classic movie sets. The polar ice caps have melted, and the continents are deep beneath the waves. The survivors live on these floating fortresses known as atolls in this place called 
water world. Brave explorers voyage in search of the legend of dry land, the last remaining on the planet. But the deacon, maniacal leader of a group of evil raiders called Smokers, is determined to find dry land first. He's ensured that no explorer has ever returned until now. Helen! It's good to see you alive! Where have you been? I've been to Dryland! It's our salvation! We can all start new lives on Dryland! Smokers in the distance! Battle station! <laughs> said, and he told me personally, that someone here knows the way to dry land. You'll never find dry land, Deacon. I won't let you. I need to know about dry land, so the first one that speaks lives. Leave him alone. He doesn't know anything. Don't care. Oh, Wait, no! 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 All right, I'll tell you. Now you're talking sense. Bring him up. How'd that taste, cousin? It tastes like chicken. <laughs> I hate that joke. Drop him! Get the mirror approaching at high speed! Oh, no, no, not him! Not the mariner! Shoot, shoot, shoot! Shoot the water, son, the water! down to me. The moment no! I'm waiting for. Come on, Mono, hey, Muto. No, no, no! Take a bath, fish boy. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Oh, not my seat, wait. Mexico. Over a span of three quarters of a century, 
Universal's massive back lot of outdoor sets and facades has become a repository of exotic locations and cinematic history. Colonial Street is a neighborhood in our town, USA. Not too far from Colonial Street is a taste of old New York. That's what makes the back lot such a magical place. It's a world of detailed handcraft illusion built by Hollywood's best technicians. Park Lake was the location for a variety of films and television shows from Psycho to the Creature of the Black Lagoon to the long-running TV hit McHale's Navy. Today, it's the Red Sea from the Ten Commandments. Just before you cross, over 40,000 gallons of water disappear in less than three minutes. How? Uh, let's just call it a movie miracle. Universal back lot is a busy place. Workers maintain or change present facades, or construct yet another for a new production. Films and television shows are in active production on any working day. At any moment, you may be behind the scenes when cameras roll. Do you recognize Cabot Cole? It's the deceptively peaceful little town Angela Lansbury calls home in Murder, She Wrote, one of television's all-time favorite mystery series. Hey, you, Mr. Fisherman, uh, uh, you shouldn't be fishing in those waters there. Uh, yeah, th th there's been shark attacks there. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh. Uh <laughs> hey, hey, you better get going. Whoa, hey, hey, you, hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think he's in trouble now. Folks, folks, don't look at this. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's it. Well, he has got This tranquil town has yet another famous resident, a menacing great white shark from Jaws, saying hello as only he knows how. Universal has made romances, comedies, melodramas, and cliffhangers by the hundreds. People today seek the same things as ever from motion pictures. Suspense, thrills, romance, tears, and perhaps most of all, laughter.
One of the all-time first ladies of comedy is remembered in a touching tribute. Lucille Ball's treasures, awards, personal scripts are displayed here, along with an interactive trivia game and hilarious clips from her shows. It's only fitting that the laughter lingers on here, where we will always love Lucy. You have a little trouble with that here. Let me help. Animal Actors Stage is a fur and feather extravaganza where the stars are famous animals from movies and TV. These actors may work for peanuts, but they don't let anyone forget that they are the stars and that the people are the supporting cast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Benji. Come on out, Benji. Hi there. Now, Benji's our special guest star today, too, and he has a dramatic part coming up in a new movie. Everybody knows what a dramatic actor he is. Oh, he's got to crawl into the burning building. There's a lot of smoke. He's got to get down real low. Too much smoke. Eventually, he passes out from smoke inhalation. It's really sad. The fireman rushes in to save Benji, and... Oh, no. Benji's dead with his eyes open. <laughs> Fireman takes him outside, lays him down on the sidewalk. He gets some oxygen, he jumps up, and he rushes back into the building. That's it. <laughs> Benji, you jump up, and you rush. <laughs> oh, look, camera, smile. Nice. Smile over there for them. That's a nice smile. Show them your lips. Show them. Big. Duckbill lips. Mick Jagger. <laughs> uh oh, don't be embarrassed. All right, pretty exciting group of folks for this show. Do you like them? You do. Wow. Do you like me? <laughs> yes, you do. Tell them what you think about me. Go ahead. Oh, that is. Pick it up now. That's disgusting. Now quit it. Come on, quit it. We're doing a show form of art will provoke a child's laughter more quickly than the antics of a favorite cartoon character. One of the most enduring duos in animation history is a raucous bird whose call is familiar to grandparents and grandchildren alike. Woody Woodpecker and his creator, Walter Lance. In 1940, I got the crazy idea for, for Woodpecker. And Produce, started producing Woody Woodpecker, and uh, he'd been going ever since. He's now 50 years old. And my wife, Gracie, did his voice for 40 years. The fractured fantasies of Frostbite Falls have a new home right here. Graumus Chinese Theater. Rocky, Bullwinkle, Boris, and Natasha, and all their friends are the stars. I hope you really like. As you can see, nothing up my sleeves. Unless you count my arms, of course. Abra T. Debra. Hocus Pocus. Baba Ganoush. Hmm. No rabbit. Oh, well, the shoe must go on. Yeah, but it's not even your size. <laughs> okay, Mr. Rabbit. Come to Papa. Here we go. No. Hmm. Here, wait. I got something. Ooh, definitely nope. 
Boy, somebody's gonna get a bang out of this. Uh-oh. Oh, be sure to join us next time for Aggregate Aggravation, or someday my prince will come. It's been said that the world is a comedy to those who think and a tragedy to those who feel. Now, we treasure laughter so much because for all of us, life has its share of sadness. Tragedy has a power all its own. And some of the most unforgettable moments in movies were the ones that broke our hearts. Now, who among us can ever forget Lon Chaney's greatest role as Quasimodo? in the torture scene in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Kirk Douglas's crucifixion at the close of Spartacus. Some of our most memorable film heroes were the ones whose tragic failures bore a kind of redeeming nobility that made them winners after all. This famous set is the Court of Miracles, a corner of medieval Paris where Lon Chaney played the final scenes as Quasimodo, one of film's most tragic heroes. The 1923 release, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, remains a masterpiece of silent filmmaking. And here in Spartacus Square, our imaginations travel across the centuries to Imperial Rome. Those who are about to die salute you. The story of a gladiator and slave who struggled for freedom against oppression is one that transcends the ages. Films that last have a special magic. Many of Universal's recent movies deserve to be called classics. The most popular motion picture of all time is the story of two friends from two different worlds. It's Steven Spielberg's beloved E.T. It's a sweet journey. The ride's a sweet journey. I like the transition between this world and E.T.'s world. E.T. <laughs> is like the Wizard of Oz. The story continues in E.T.'s adventure. Hi, I'm Steven Spielberg, and welcome to the E.T. adventure. E.T., as you know, was marooned here on Earth, three million light years from home. And now he needs your help. You see, a big problem has developed on E.T.'s home world, the Green Planet. So, E.T.'s teacher, Botanicus, delivered a message from the Green Planet. E.T., come home. Hide E.T. from the scientists who seek him. Bring him in a spaceship or carry him on your bikes. But bring him home. Bravo. Yeah, E.T. must go home, and only you can help him. E.T., help us. Ready. Yep, ready. Good luck, everyone.
Imagination creates the fantasy. Technology is the wizard's wand that brings the illusion to life. But it is the age-old art of makeup that works its special effects on the living. Grease paint and a brush, a powder puff and false hair. These are the tools with which the artist works his sorcery. Slowly, the familiar and ordinary are dramatically transformed into creatures that could only roam our darkest nightmares. Where do you get a load of this? <laughs> it's the yeah. Beetlejuice Graveyard Review, a rock and roll review of monster yeah. mashers. Yeah. They're dead. We're grateful. It's showtime! Dracula. <laughs> uh, Bela Lugosi, Lon Chaney, Boris Karloff, the giants of motion picture suspense made their magic on the Universal back lot. No studio in the world can match Universal's tradition of classic thrillers. Alfred Hitchcock was the master of suspense. He had a 43-year association with Universal. He reinvented the thriller in films such as Saboteur, The Birds, and Marnie, drawing us into the dark corners of the human psyche. Hitchcock's genius lay in his painstaking craftsmanship. Every shot and every scene planned for maximum effect, as here in one of the most frightening scenes in movie history, from Hitchcock's masterpiece, Psycho. 
The magic of Alfred Hitchcock brings you into the mind of the master. Recreating scenes from Hitchcock's classic Saboteur and Psycho. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hollywood. Sorry I didn't hear you in all this rain. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. The story of a young man and his mother. Boo! Alfred Hitchcock was a genius at using camera angles to build terror and suspense. Every shot was carefully storyboarded, just like this. So by plotting out a sequence of images, he was able to imply the violence in the scene. That infamous psycho shower scene is one of the most frightening in motion picture history, but you never once see the knife touch Janet Lee's skin. And with that delightful bit of Americana, we reluctantly drop our curtain. No other studio opens its doors to the public on such a scale. Every day, thousands of visitors come behind the scenes to see the sets, to learn the tricks, and they even take part in the nuts and bolts work of making movies. Now, there are three wonders in special effect sequences. The first is that these grand illusions look so real on the screen, although we know that they aren't. We willingly suspend our disbelief so that the fantasy may work its effect on us. The second begins when we ask, how did they do it? And how can we find someone to tell us? The third wonder is that here at Universal Studios Hollywood, we have the opportunity to do it ourselves. It's just as Carl Lemley imagined it. Thousands of people every day laughing, cheering, sitting on the edge of their chairs, here in the heart of Hollywood magic. In fact, it's even better than he ever dreamed. Not only because the magic of movie making has jumped light years ahead, but because we're sharing all of the science and all the secrets of modern motion pictures. Only at Universal Studios can visitors be transported into the recreation of a blockbuster movie scene and live a reenactment of its most thrilling moments. This tall, good-looking young actor made his first appearance in New York. He made quite an impression. He's still tearing up the town in Universal's own King Kong. Late word just in. The path of destruction continues east, causing thousands to flee their homes. Police admit that they are powerless to stop the enraged beast. Military units are rushing to the scene. The beast was last sighted near the 200 block of Old Fulton Avenue. We now go to live coverage on the scene with our helicopter reporter, Kelly King. Kelly. We're now hovering above the wreckage of a crushed L train. The helicopter beside us is searching for, wait, there's a tram load of people down there. We've got to go down and warn them. Attention, people on the tram. You are in danger. seen as one of the most complex movie sets ever built. 
its accomplishment required the creative efforts of Hollywood's top show designers and craftsmen. Construction of King Kong began with the aid of a computer. The task of bringing the figure to life fell to an expert in audio animatronics, Bob Gurr. The computer allows us to have complete accuracy in making sure all of the parts are going to fit exactly. Five months of labor was required to build a three-story tall steel framework of Kong. But it isn't enough to have an actor based on correct gorilla anatomy. He had to behave like a gorilla. After the engineering drawings are made, we make this 112 size working model to demonstrate all of the motions of the figure. An exact duplicate of the finished attraction was also an essential element. The other good thing about it is it helps us be able to get down there and look from the point of view of the audience exactly what the audience is going to see so we can design the show and really, really live the show right now before it's completely built. Once Kong's framework was complete, sculptors and art directors were assigned to flesh out the character and bring him to life. Six weeks were needed to sew and glue 660 pounds of fur to the massive frame. Preparations were made on the set to receive the first section of King Kong. 3,500 pounds of weight were needed to balance the new arrival. A short time later, the chest was firmly in place. From teeth to hair, no facial cosmetic detail was overlooked. Kong is so realistic that he performs only three to six feet away from tram guests. Finally, Kong was ready for his homecoming. We've been working over three years on King Kong, so this is a rather key day. All we've got to do is drive it six miles, one more trip on a crane, and it'll be installed on its final resting place, making King Kong a, a total being. The head was lowered into place, and all that remained after 11 years of research was to animate the giant figure. King Kong, which began as a one-foot-tall clay model, became the world's largest animated creature. He's capable of 29 separate computer-controlled functions. And he looks pretty scary, but he's really not a bad guy at all. He just wants to go home. The 1975 release, Earthquake, gave new meaning to the word blockbuster. Now the big one, a simulated earthquake that registers 8.3 on the Richter scale, brings down the house at Universal Studios. Ironically, the specially built soundstage that houses Earthquake may be the most earthquake-proof building ever constructed. 
Built to withstand 600,000 pounds of force 200 times a day, the attraction was designed to reproduce in detail the effects of a killer quake. The attraction producer is Larry Lester. We have three-dimensional moving objects or animated objects, which are some of the largest animated objects in any show that's ever been made. Genuine full-size subway cars simulate the train crash at 40 miles per hour. And the runaway truck is a 2,000 pound, 26 feet long, big rig. Electricity, fire and explosions, and even a 60,000 gallon flood of rushing water has been utilized to capture every terrifying sensation with perfect accuracy. And it's all designed to reset in 15 seconds to thrill and delight the next tram load of visitors. I think uh, this is certainly part of the magic of the movies. There's no question of that. Backdraft was Ron Howard's harrowing tale of the hazards and heroism of one of the most dangerous jobs of all, firefighting. Now it's at Universal, and it's a masterwork of high temperature terror. Check that door for heat, Tim. What is a backdraft? Well, the technical explanation is a fire that has burned out all the oxygen in a room, leaving only superheated gases, over 2,000 degrees, just waiting for a fresh breath of air. The fire gets what it wants. You have a backdraft. And as the film's director, I knew that getting these shots would be very hazardous for the actors and the entire film crew. Action! This is how the scene looked in the theater. Pull down that wall! A lot of hard work for a very short amount of screen time. On the next stage, you'll see how a few of those spectacular effects were created. With a universe of history already delighting millions, where does Universal go next? Back to the Future, a thrilling odyssey based on the fantasy trilogy. We are behind the scenes on the set of Back to the Future, The Ride. This time-traveling adventure was the concept of Steven Spielberg. The construction of a camera-sized model was the first step toward fulfilling an innovative concept that would allow Universal Studios guests to fully experience the sensation of flight. We wanted to take our guests inside the motion picture screen and let them experience what it feels like to ride in Doc Brown's car through time. To do that, we combined the latest technology in flight simulators, 
hydraulics, pneumatics, control systems with live effects like wind and fog, gave them vibration like they've never felt before, took all of that and combined it with a spectacular motion picture film, the largest image available in the industry. The power of special effects to take you into an alternate reality, you know, this amazing world of different places in time, different places in space, uh, past, present, and future, and do that very kinetically, very viscerally, to where uh, in four minutes you, ha you are completely thrown into another level of, of experience. I'm gonna take a little joy ride. I'll stumble bye-bye. That's our cue. Hang on to your hats. When you see Biff and the little lawyer accelerate to 88 miles per hour and bump him. A pretty rough place. We bumped him. The impact between the two vehicles should send us straight back to the Institute. For the first time in history, man comes face to face with dinosaurs. Here at Universal Studios Hollywood, famed director Steven Spielberg's blockbuster film, Jurassic Park. What do they got in there, King Kong? Roars to life in the greatest and most technically sophisticated theme park attraction ever created. We, we began the concept of Jurassic Park to ride while Jurassic Park the film was in production. How to make huge dinosaurs appear to be real was no easy task. It took years to develop the mechanisms and coverings that could make these creatures convincingly lifelike. Did it work? You decide. It's just beyond my wildest dreams. Welcome to Jurassic Park, the ride. As you glide through the park, you encounter a variety of dinosaurs who seem friendly. more feared predators, the raptors and the ferocious T-Rex, are securely contained in Carnivore Canyon behind a 10,000-volt electrified fence. Watch out! You won't believe what happens next. What will they think of next? It's quite a universe of cinemagic, isn't it? It is still growing, still changing, still making the magic that has made Universal Studios Hollywood a landmark of the imagination since 1915. Universal remains today as it has always been a pioneer, seeking new ways to make the heart beat faster. This magical city is the Sorcerer's Laboratory, now one of the world's largest, most advanced, most productive motion picture studios on Earth. The exotic sets and old world streets 
whisper their spells to everyone who visits. But the real magic of Universal is timeless. It's as old as fantasy, yet renewed every day. It's laughter, tears, suspense, and that's the magic we do best.